Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms. And today I want to share some information about hauling and loading a trailer and how that relates to the life of your transmission. So for a point of reference, if you don't already know, I had a 2019 Ram Limited 1500 and I shelled the transmission in it at 120,000 miles and my extended warranty claim was denied. You're talking about a $6,000 transmission in a $65,000 truck with a $3,800 extended warranty and I had a prolonged fight for over a month trying to get the extended warranty to pay for the transmission. I've got a separate video on that if you want to check that out, but it left me without a truck for like six weeks. So that really got me thinking, was there anything I could have done differently to keep my transmission from going bad? Because the first thought is, Ram should put a better transmission in their trucks that never goes out. But we're in the real world here. Anything mechanical can have failures. And after you get over that point of being mad at them, mad at the extended warranty company, I start to think, what could I have done differently? Or what can I do differently with my next truck to help, hopefully help that transmission last longer? The big issue with my extended warranty being denied came down to tire size. I made a very small change to tire size and they were saying that that voided my warranty. And I thought that was ridiculous. I still think it's ridiculous and they ended up paying, but there is a takeaway to number one, be aware of what's written in your extended warranty if you buy one. And two, maybe if you're towing and hauling a lot, be thoughtful about making a more drastic change, putting a high lift, widening, a lot bigger tires, just be conscious or do your research on whether or not that's going to affect your truck's ability to safely haul this kind of load on a regular basis. The first thing I want to talk about is something that came into play today. And I went and picked up a load of three quarter inch plywood, 3,500 pounds of plywood. Obviously the sheets are four foot wide, eight foot long. The inside rails of this trailer are 84 inches. That means I cannot set it in crossways. It has to go in long ways. And actually, you want it to go in lengthways anyway because you want to get that weight up and centered over the axles right. If you had a deck over, that'd be a lot easier. You wouldn't have this exact problem. But the same mechanics still apply. So in this scenario, they set the plywood on the back of the trailer and shove it forward with the forklift. As they're shoving that forward, you got to think about your transmission. Because if you just pull up, put the truck in park, and then have them load the plywood, think, the what's holding your truck from moving? Well, that's the transmission, obviously. And if you think about it like, like your transmission, you put it in park and it locks it in where it, it can't let the axles turn. And then you start shoving on your trailer from behind with that forklift and you watch a truck jerk and rock and think about the amount of force that's putting on your transmission. It's not the way to do it. You want to try to find a way to not have any stress on your transmission when you're loading, when you're parked on a hill, when you're parked especially, just having a heavy load stopped on a hill you don't want your transmission to be what's holding that from rolling backward. So in this scenario, when I'm having that plywood loaded the way I do, I put the transmission in neutral, then I apply the parking brake. At that point, your transmission is not locked up against anything by the parking gear. It's not under load at that point. Then you put the parking brake on and you chalk your wheels. Then you put it in park. Or if you have someone with you, you can have that person sit in the truck with their foot on the brake. Now, you're really using your brakes, not your transmission, to stop the vehicle. This is a tip I actually got from Stanley the Dirt Monkey. I'm not gonna say his last name because I'll mess it up. But he had a long video about everything related to how to properly load equipment on a trailer, and this is one thing he talked about. 
and I thought it was a great piece of information. Before I watched his video, I was already using the emergency brake. But the way he explained it, and it makes sense to me, is if you put it in park first, you're putting that transmission under pressure. And then put on the emergency brake is kind of like a backup system, I guess. But if you're already under load in the transmission, you're not accomplishing as much with your emergency brake. Okay, now let's talk about other things that you need to think about with your transmission life. And before I do that, I also want to point out I'm no expert on transmissions or hauling, and there's going to be a bunch of people smarter than me on this topic that are going to leave good comments. And if there's additional information or something that I say that is inaccurate, I like to put that in the description and the pinned comment. So check those out because that's where the updates are if there's better information I find out later. The next thing I want to say is if you don't want a transmission failure, don't overload the ratings of your vehicle. And that is not just a single number known as the tow rating or tow capacity. It's several numbers, including your gross combined vehicle weight rating and your payload, understanding the pin weight that your trailer is putting onto the truck. So I have a video showing the way safe hitches that I use and every single time I pull a trailer, I can see how much weight is being transferred from the trailer onto the payload of the truck. So with my 1500, I had three trailers that I was pulling all the time. First, I have an enclosed trailer that we were using for the plywood. Fully loaded, that was probably 7,000 pounds. Then I have a mowing trailer fully loaded, it's probably only 4,500, 5,000 pounds. And then my equipment trailer with the tractor on it would weigh about 8,000 pounds. And the truck's rated for 11,800 pound tow capacity. So I felt pretty good about it. I'm only at 65% of my capacity. Then I got a dump trailer. And as soon as I got the dump trailer, I started looking at bigger trucks because I knew I was gonna be towing 100% of my capacity. The dump trailer fully loaded would weigh 14,000 pounds. I made sure to only put four tons in it so that it was 12,000 pounds. That is full capacity and it's not where you wanna live every day. But the other thing I learned later after I got the new truck and the, the way safe hitches is, I was exceeding my payload every time I pulled that I was putting about 2,000 pounds of payload between the, the tongue weight of the trailer and myself and anything I might have in the bed of the truck. I was, and that truck was rated for 1,400 pounds payload. So I was exceeding it every time I pulled that. Next thing I wanna say is maintenance. So when I was younger, no one ever seemed to worry about changing transmission fluid or having their transmission serviced. Vehicles were different. We were driving old vehicles at the time, nothing that was $80,000 for sure. And we weren't hauling anything. It was just a transmission was something all you ever did was maybe check the fluid level. And that is not the way to do it when you're hauling. If you're consistently hauling 10, 12, 15,000 pounds, you need to be at bare minimum doing the manufacturer's recommended maintenance on the transmission. I've seen some guys who do like hot shotting say that they change their fluid and filters twice as often as they're even recommended because you're, you're using it in a more extreme way than the people who wrote that manual anticipated. While we're talking about fluid, you also want to monitor the temperature of your transmission fluid. Now I looked these numbers up quite a while back, but from memory, they didn't want your transmission fluid temperature to get over 200 and four degrees or something like that. And so when I'm towing near capacity, I can toggle it on my screen where the, right below the speedometer to say the transmission temperature. And on my other truck, it would sit at 192 and I could be over capacity and it would just sit there. But as soon as, if you see that number go up over 200, then you need to pull off and let it cool back down. Hopefully your vehicle has a transmission cooling system and you won't have that issue, but anything can happen and I just think it's a good thing to keep an eye on. The next thing I wanna talk about is the way you drive. So if you're at your capacity on your towing, 
you want to be a little more cautious and a little more thoughtful about how you drive. The first thing is use the tow haul feature. Some people may not want to trust a computer to do the thinking for them, but the engineers, I believe, at this point, have learned a thing or two about you know, how the truck should perform when it's hauling. It's going to change your shift points and it's going to do a few other things for you. I'd recommend using that feature. I also recommend using exhaust brakes if you have them, although that's really more of a safety and braking thing than it is about the transmission. But it definitely helps you out when you need to stop. So you've got it in tow haul mode and you're loaded up and you get on the interstate. Now the question is, should you use cruise control? And I think it depends. The best bet is probably not to use your cruise control because then you're making intelligent decisions. I know I just said that the tow haul mode's intelligent, but you want to be cognizant of when your truck is shifting. And you don't want the vehicle speed and the load and the highway conditions to have you in a situation where the truck's constantly shifting back and forth. You'd be better off staying in the lower gear if it's going to try to shift constantly. So if you've got cruise control on and you notice it's shifting a lot, you might either use your gear limiter, take it out of cruise control, and be more intelligent about maybe don't accelerate or maintain the speed up a grade as much as it wants to. I hope that provided some value to people. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links up here to more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.